Guys, the S60 rear is in. Yes, sir. It's in, baby. And this thing has just been awesome. I've been breaking it in now. I've got about 300 miles on it already. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the install. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fireball Mullet Channel. We finally got it in guys. The S60 Strange Rear End is in. It's a 35 spline and I went ahead and got that narrowed a half an inch on each side to give me a little bit more room. It was close, but it all tucked. The tires tucked and I want to show you guys how this thing turned out. So it took me a few weeks, so I apologize for the video being late, but let's get right to it and check it out. All right, we got a subscriber here, Cameron. All right, what's up, man? How you doing, everybody? Hi, everybody. Got a fireball mullet. Figuring this thing out. Get ready to drop the nine bolt in it. So we got everything out. Little control arms, shocks, the uh, sway bar links. We went ahead and uh, took off the, which was a pain in the ass. It took Cameron three wrenches and 12 hands to break that loose. Cause it was like, seriously, like since 1985 look looked like. Yep. So we got all these just kind of hanging here. Yep. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. So we got everything unhooked. Went ahead and left the Panhard bar on one side, zip tied after we disconnected the, this Panhard bar from the rear, then Disconnected the shocks here. Disconnected the little control arms last because that's really what's kind of holding the rear end, if you will. And I left the torque arm in. I've got a UMI one coming, so we'll replace that later. I've also got UMI adjustable lower control arms coming. So all that new stuff's coming. So that's really it, guys. All right, there's a nine bolt. Look at the difference, wow. And you know what, we were just talking about Cameron and Jason, we couldn't believe the freaking brake line. Strange included these little clips here, just like stock, and it just clipped right on. I mean, we barely had to bend, or they even included the bolt for the Union in about the same stock third gen spot. So, wow, pretty big difference though. <laughs> Massive. All right. All ready. Go underneath of it. I'm going to go ahead and transfer. See if these brake lines, if I can bend them to make them work. There we go. Just going to get in there. Just got the little control arms on. And we're getting ready to do the torque arm so we can pivot it. So go ahead and do that. And we'll bring it on up to the airbags. Honestly, guys, it's a pretty easy, just bolt on a few things. And then I've got to, I'll work on the brakes later on. Get the LS1 brakes on, get the bracket, parking brake, and all that good stuff. So I'll get that going. Yeah, great looking setup here. Again, you know, they provide, Strange provides everything that just bolts on. You can see it's sitting on the bracket where the Panhard bar is going to go on. Nice setup. I don't have any fluids in it yet. Again, I got to get a drive shaft. So next thing is <clears throat> finish bolting this up and pretty straightforward. All right, guys, I want to catch you up a little bit. We got it all in there. It's pretty much all installed and ran into a, uh, an issue here. The first one, well, really the only issue I have, everything else fit really nice, but the spring perch here, that inside piece doesn't fit. If you look on the other rear, that's wider than the strange. And I've seen this and heard this before. So I'm either going to have to dremel out around the strange opening or sand down around the airbag outer edge so it'll fit inside there. 
So that's kind of the only issue there that I've got to work out. So once I figure that out, it's pretty much done. So got everything pretty much there. Then I'll put the brakes on, the brackets, and I need a drive shaft, of course. <laughs> but yeah, pretty simple. All right, I went ahead and picked up a cordless, uh, it's just a cobalt one, pretty fair price. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, of course I got a bunch of batteries that, so it just works, which I kind of like. So I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this in and uh, we'll see how much she cuts. Right. Wow, that thing cut way, way faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up. And I kind of taped off the bag. Let's see how this is. Oh, look at that. All right, wow. I gotta tell you with the Dremel, I know I spent at least a couple hours and was nowhere near close. I spent literally 15 minutes with dad's bit from 1985, baby. And of course this thing spun a lot faster. So between that and just a bigger bit and just going around it, it was literally like 15 minutes, guys. Long ago, I ran to Lowe's, picked up this. They didn't have a single bit. And so I came home and was like, okay, I'll go to Harbor Freight or something in the morning. And I looked at my dad's box. He was a welder by trade. So thanks, dad. This is solid here. Let's go ahead and take you underneath so you can see it. Let's kind of see there. Now I got to touch up on my paint, but there it is. So if you guys are doing the S60, rear and you have like ground control weight jacks or anything but springs you're probably going to run into this issue because strange uses a thicker wall tubing and you know this is definitely a lot different but it's still really thick here so i'll take you in here well i kind of got it covered up but um yeah it's still really thick i'll just take it down a little bit i'll show you there we go you can see here we got a lot of freaking left here especially when you compare it to the third gen which is very small so anyway here we go guys we're all set that's awesome. <laughs> it's all in the tools, baby. Hey guys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That lets the third gen universe of the world know that, hey, we're making some content. All right guys, so I wanted to walk you through a little bit on these LS1 brakes, especially the emergency brake. I've never messed with this before, so I wanted to give you guys a couple steps here of how this thing goes together. So the first thing, I went ahead and bought a off of Rock Auto, a kit that come with the clips, new screws here, and it also come with, I got some rear brake shoes, and then all the pieces here. 
see the little pin. You got the little wheel, star wheel there to adjust. And then a couple end pieces here. So I'm gonna show you how those go together because I kind of screwed up on the other one and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't adjust. It was, uh, I couldn't get the rotor on. And that it was because I had the pin and the one with the star adjuster and this one, instead of the short one, the pin actually goes in there. So it makes it longer and you can't get the rotor on. So anyway, I wanted to show you a couple things here, how all this goes together. So the first thing I'm gonna do, kind of put some blue thread locker on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on. This is the clip here, once you tighten that up, that the shoe, you can see here, there's a lip right here. That lip just goes inside, goes in there. So that clip just holds it down. So this screw is a little hard to get to. So I just got a uh, 5 sixteenths and I'm just gonna tighten this down here. This actually makes it nice. So first step, go ahead and get your uh, clip on. All right guys, went ahead, tightened down the clip. Again, the shoe fits on the inside of here, so you'll just snap it down in there, okay? Um, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll go ahead now, and we've got to basically rebuild this little cylinder here, which activates the parking brake shoes and the key things for that is these levers here now this is all stock stuff here so the way these work all right so you got this arm here and this is going to face obviously <clears throat> you're going to have your cable which i have right here this is the hawks fourth gen to, thir to third gen cable adapter so the ends for fourth gen on this side and the third gen on the other side. So this is gonna go on like this. And once that hooks on, it basically slides in and it'll slide in. Now go ahead and put that in there so you can see. Yeah, so I just slid it in there, okay? And then you'll see, this actually has a little indention there. That's where the pin goes, and I'll show you that in a minute. So that little pin goes there, and then this here comes through the cylinder, basically, and the pin rides on that. So when you pull the brake, it basically forces forces this out and pushes the emergency brakes shoes out, which catches the rotor hat, basically. So that's how that works. But anyway, this, the way these go together, I'll show you uh, outside the car here. All right, guys. So this is kind of the way it's going here. So you got the, put the boot over it, and then you got this, bracket here and then that like I said that goes in and then the little peg here once you push it through you'll see the hole here and what you do is you fill it full of grease I'm going to use some caliper grease here uh, that I've got and fill this up with grease the cavity basically don't put too much in it because you don't want to hydro um, hydraulic uh, push things in and out so but put enough in there. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's kind of the next step here. All right, guys, I went ahead and filled this thing, a little bit of grease here, just inside the boot, and I'm gonna slide it in. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the cavity here with grease. And again, I've got some, uh, Basically, I'm gonna use some of this caliper grease here and kind of fill most of it up. So, got this handy dandy brush here. I'm gonna 
just put a little bit on it. Just a little bit at a time. Just kind of work it in there. So I'll go ahead and put some grease in there now. And I'll push that piece in. Just gonna push that in there, like so. And we just screw down that retaining bracket for the boot. Got that on there. Let's see if I can take you in here. Right there. And there's two screws, one on each side. And then the parking brake basically will hook onto it right there. Once we mount that, which will be kind of the next thing, probably. But what I want to do is go ahead and put these together. These two right here go together. That goes inside of here, and you screw that on there, and that's basically your adjuster. And that brings the shoes out when you adjust that, that star adjuster there. So go ahead, push them in there, get this peg here, push that inside, some grease will hold it which will be good. It'll be on the inside of that arm that I showed you. So we'll go ahead and stick that in and then we'll put that on. Go ahead and get this in here. Once you push it in there, you'll feel where it's kind of in the arm there. All right, guys, let me show you what I got here. As you can see there, basically with the grease, that is sitting right in that indention on that arm as it kind of comes through. So now just kind of take your piece here. Remember the peg goes through this one here and that's just gonna go in there and push it in. All right guys, you can see got the star adjuster in there this end screwed into that star adjuster. So you got that on that end. And like I said, the peg and that one is over here. And then the shoe just kind of fits in that groove. There's a little groove here. Yeah, see that groove? So that shoe fits right in the groove in the end of that screw, if you will. So that's really it. These just kind of pop on again. And that's pretty much it. Just put it over the axle first. You might have to work it a little bit and then pop it down. Step two on the clip. Step three, spread out these until you click them over into the grooves on each side. Now you go ahead and adjust it using this right here. Take a screwdriver and you can start to move it out and go ahead and adjust it. All right, guys, slip the rotor on. So basically that emergency brake is to, is basically pushing out on the inside of this hat here, okay? And so what I like to do is get it, there is a spec for the emergency cable arm, that piece that was sticking out. I think it's like six to eight millimeters or four to eight millimeters play there. But I like to do it where it's not touching and I tested the parking brake and it's working great. So I think we're all set. You can see here, just got a nice little, you know, basically I'm gonna do a little spin. Yep. So, and you can see here, and then I put when I, when I do the calipers, I like to get a couple of these. I need to get one more over there. So I'll put two of these on there. And that way, this will sit true when we're lining up our calipers. And we may have to shim that caliper out. So anyway, the rest of this stuff, guys, is pretty basic. So really, I just wanted to go over that emergency uh, parking brake, those little pieces, because it was confusing to me. And I couldn't really find anything uh, that was uh, explaining how that stuff works. So hopefully that, that helps you out. All right, guys. Well, I went ahead and this was the drive shaft, the aluminum one that I was running before the S60 rear. 
And this is the Strange Chromoly. And it was pretty cool because I actually bought it from a friend of mine who was running in his third gen, an S60 rear, who also had the 31 spline uh, Magnum F. So we get ready to put it in now, but I roughly measured it and it looked good. So I took it to a drive shaft uh, shop. They just did a final uh, fine tune balance on it and swapped out the yoke onto here. So this, this bad boy should be all ready to go. So that's gonna be really the last part of this. Get the drive shaft in, put the torque arm back on, and then I've gotta do some brake line adjustments because the third gen brake line doesn't meet the fourth gen bracket to on the lower control arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can maybe modify that bracket. nice is you really have these heavy duty caps here which is super nice and strange this is one of the upgrades that we got and they actually go through Start the bolt on from the back side. Awesome. With it narrowed a half an inch, I can put over a finger in this lip here. So plenty of room now. Yeah, it's tough. Awesome. Freaking love it. Look at that. That's tucked right there, man. Wow. That's freaking tucked, man. So badass though. So. Wow. Front really lays down. The rear, with the new rear, I think with the tube, the tubes, the axle tubes being a little bigger, sets up a little more in the rear, but still pretty badass. Yeah, this is crazy. Look at that. Man. Wow. That shit is tucked, man. Pardon the mess. I just finished the project, so I need to clean everything up, but yeah, this is crazy. S60 rear is in. Just gotta fill it up with fluid. Adjust the panhard bar a little bit more and bleed the brakes. Should be back on the road. Fireball mullets back on the road, baby. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. We got the first maiden voyage here of the S60 rear. And so far, 
crazy quiet. I mean, super quiet gear set, man. So I'm loving that so far. And the other thing I noticed is, man, it's just doing great. So the problem is, and you know, this is a big problem, guys, and this is what I'm found out about uh, the install, is we got a break-in period. <laughs> and we can't go but like 45 miles an hour max for like 500 miles and you can't beat on it you can't do any kind of hard accelerations or anything like that for 500 miles so that's one of the most difficult parts of this install <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, so, no, I'm going to do it by the book. They say Strange recommends that you go ahead and put 85 W40 non-synthetic gear in it, which we did uh, yesterday. And then you go ahead, you drive, the mile, you drive the car for 50 miles, and then let it cool down completely. And then do that for 500 miles, basically. And then once you complete that process, then go ahead, take the rear cover off, clean everything out with brake fluid, drain all the fluid, and then go ahead and put some new fresh fluid in it. So, you know, it's, uh, so, <laughs> it's actually gonna be an expensive endeavor the way gas prices are right now. <laughs> 500 miles. But I kind of want to just do it during this course of the week. Go ahead and knock this out. And maybe by, today is Saturday. So maybe by next Saturday, we'll go ahead and change out the gear oil. And hopefully have it all broken in. And then we can do some really fun shit with the car. Okay? I want to see two line burnouts. I want to see how this thing hooks. Of course, I got the Michelin Pilot Sports in the rear, which, you know, they're a tread wear of like 300, you know, so probably start to look at some different tires here to, you know, start to look at how fast this car really is, because honestly, guys, I don't know how fast this car really is, because, you know, anytime you get into it, man, that torque hits, and it just blows up the rear, especially with the 9 volt that I had, the nine bolt, the posse kind of cones went out in it. So it's been like a one leg peg for a while. So there was no chance of this thing actually hooking at all. So I'm actually kind of excited to see how fast this car really is. But anyway, I want to give you kind of an update. We're driving the car. It's been amazing. And, you know, I'm just super excited. This is this is a big monumental moment for me because I've been wanting to do an upgraded rear for so long and it seems to be just working out great. So I wanted to kind of get you guys in here in some uh, video. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing any burnouts or anything like that until I break in this rear. So thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel. That'll help me out. The third gen interweb universe let them guys know that we're doing some third gen content and we'll see you on the next video guys